to look at you, right? Let's look in this area if you want to talk to that. What well, if I see a ghost behind you? Should I say something? Definitely say something. <laughs> Beachwood Avenue, and I was about 13 years old, I My guess. My daughter's friend, boyfriend just died, and I was talking to her at the dining room table. And um, I was reading a magazine, though, so I had my back turned to the TV, and then I heard this. I don't know if you can hear that. Like somebody was tapping their fingers on the TV. Then after that, I went, her daughter asked me to go upstairs, and the light was off, so I walked upstairs. And I thought, and I really... I don't know, I guess, I don't know, I didn't really think anything of it, I just turned around. I walked upstairs and I went to turn on the light and there in the chair, I could swear that I saw him as clear as day, sitting in the chair, and then I flicked the light on and it was, <laughs> And there was a, a man standing there, and he had on a top hat, kind of like Abraham Lincoln's, and a black coat and a white shirt, and he didn't have a beard, he was, um, I guess he was like an older man. To me, he looked older. He was probably about 50. And he was very tall. And he just looked at me. And I looked at him. And then he walked into the wall. And my heart was beating really fast. So, And I was never really that close to him, so I never saw him in my dreams. But I could have swore. Maybe because he was on my mind. And that we had that big argument downstairs about him. That he was on my mind when I went upstairs. But I could have swore he was sitting on the chair. I said, Jocelyn. She said, what? I said, your dad was just sitting on a chair. <laughs> and he had his cowboy jersey on too. Same thing he was buried in. Yeah. Well, um, I, I always say, like when people ask me, what religion I am. I always say I grew up Catholic, but we weren't really practicing um, Catholics. We, but we, um, Poppy mostly was very um, not religious, like going to church, but he always had, like we always had God in the house. I remember one story Ashley stood out when he was little and um, he was um, fostered out. He was um, an orphan. And he lived with people he called Grandpa and Grandma, but they weren't really very nice to him. And um, he was little, and they sent him to the store. And on the way to the store, he used to have to walk past a great big house that everybody said was haunted. And you had to pass by it to go to the store, and then pass by it to go home. And um, so when he passed by it to go to the store, he kept thinking to himself, I hope it doesn't get dark. I hope it doesn't get dark. So he ran all the way to the store, passed by the house, and ran by the house real fast. And then he was running home, and he had to pass the house, and he was thinking, Oh, God, just let me make it past the house. Just let me make it past the house. And he was saying, The Lord is my shepherd. And he was trying to remember how that prayer went. And he was literally couldn't remember the whole thing. And he was going, The Lord is my shepherd, and I still not want. He maketh me to, to, oh, you know what I mean. And he started to run. <laughs> and that was one of my favorite stories. I must have been like seven or eight after I made my communion. Every Saturday I went to confession and every Sunday I went for communion. We used to get so bored with the same confession. We'd just say we disobeyed our mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> so one time we stopped at the um, Tracy's 5 and 10 and we took a Super Bowl so we could say that we had another sin. And I said, well, I disobeyed my mom and dad, but I also stole. <laughs> <laughs> like it would break your commandment. And um, so then he said, well, take it back. Why'd you take the Super Bowl? And I, he said, what did you steal? I said, a Super Bowl. He said, why'd you do that? And I just, well, I got tired of just saying that I disobeyed my mom and dad. <laughs> so he said, take it back. So we took it back. But I did have to say more hell mirrors in our father's death. And that's the contrition. My mother was... Um very involved with the Baptist church, yes. We went to Sunday school every week. We went to church every Sunday. 
and um, I'm continue, I continue to be a Baptist. I think that my mom wanted us to be religious and, and spiritual. Um, I remember one conversation when I was about 12, and I guess that's the time when you start to question everything that's going on. And I said, um, how do we know what's written in the Bible is true? And it's not just something that somebody felt like writing one day. And I don't remember exactly how she answered, but I could definitely tell that she didn't like that I said that. <laughs> um, and she wanted me to not, not believe. She wanted me to believe. She didn't want to answer the question because she wanted me to find my own way. But um, I just remember that because she, I could tell that she was like biting her tongue and not saying, well, that's just crazy. Of course it's real. My father was a, my father really didn't practice religion until about 10 years before he died. After my father died, me and my, my mother would not go home. She stayed with my oldest sister for three months. She would send us back to our house to pick clothing up for her. And she sent me and my brother back into the house about a week after my father had passed away. And I was with my brother and we were standing in the kitchen and no one was home. And we heard someone walking down the hallway of the home they walked through our living room, down our basement steps, back up the basement steps, back through the living room, up the hallway, into my father's and mother's bedroom, and the door shut. And at that point, we ran. Hmm. At the time, I think I was too worried about my mother to, to even think about it. But when I think about it now, I know that it was him trying to tell us that he was still here, you know, around. Personal experiences that I have, um, I don't have as many for spiritual things as the people around me, but I grew up hearing about people seeing whatever you want to call them, ghosts or angels. I grew up in that culture of people saying, um, you know, oh, I saw this person or in my dream this person said something to me. And so it just was a part of life. Um, after my mom died, she died before my dad. I was worried that she was by herself. I knew she was in heaven, but she, only my grandmother had died before her. But I saw in, um, one night when my mom, in my dream, my mom was holding hands with four people. And I knew one was my grandmother, but then there was a taller guy and one that wasn't that much, that was almost the same size as her. And I didn't know who those two other people were. And then that, morning when I woke up I said dad I saw mommy in my dream and she's not alone she's hold in fact she's holding hands with three other people and he says well I wonder who they are I said well one is mama Mooney you know but I don't know who the other two people are and then shortly after that my dad died and then my grandfather died so it must have been this because I couldn't see them too so I think I had like a premonition.